Welcome to JSA TV, where we're covering the latest stories, trends, and innovations from the leaders in global connectivity, digital infrastructure, and the networks within. And we are live at DCD Connect in Times Square, New York City, and I am here with Mr. Chris Downey. Chris is the CEO of a company you've probably heard of before, Flexential. Chris, welcome to JSA TV. Thanks for having me. Great to be here. You bet. Chris, uh, a, a, an honor uh, was bestowed upon you. CRN's 2024 Data Center 50 list. Um, tell us how you get an honor like that from yeah, CRN. Well, it's, uh, it's great to get the recognition sure. because uh, the, the whole team's really working hard to deliver upon our value proposition to our growing customer base. But mm -hmm. what we've been really focused on at Flexcentral is is really what I'll call strategic expansion of the platform. Mm -hmm. That that involves data centers themselves. So we deployed and sold uh, over 50 megawatts in 2023 across markets uh, like Portland and Las Vegas and Dallas and Denver and Tampa and, <laughs> and Atlanta. Um, and uh, when we have a lot more underway, we've got another 74 megawatts coming online in 2024, wow. um, which for us is, you know, it's large scale and um, and uh, and really just making sure that as we fill those environments, we're, we're, we're delivering upon the value proposition to our customers. The other area where we've invested to, to really scale the capability is on the on the network side. Mm -hmm. So just a couple months ago, we announced uh, Flexential Fabric, which is a uh, really a ne next generation interconnection solution that allows for more seamless access to the capabilities built behind, you know, within the data centers themselves, be it IP transport, uh, private line connectivity, yeah. either to um, other facilities or to the cloud or data protection, virtualized services or private cloud resources. And and what we've done with Flexential Fabric is really enabled that over uh, one single port. So it's kind of one and done. You know, I, I love that we're having this conversation, Chris, because, um, and, and, and it, it, I get it, it's not just lip service, but we're talking about AI, we talk about machine learning, we're talking about all these other things. But from within the data center, there is a myriad of services, products, of so, uh, solutions that, that happen there in addition to some of the next generation technology that we uh, that become buzzwords, I suppose, within our industry. So maybe tell our viewers a little bit about why uh, this new product is so important to Flexential. Yeah, sure. So um, our model is uh, is what we call multi-tenancy. So mm -hmm. we build a, you know, uh, the scale of the data center has changed over time, but yeah. our latest form factor is about 36 megawatts, and so we can host multi-megawatt requirements or host expansion for some of our retail base that may be 250 kW. But those those types of clients need more over time. Uh -huh. And so what Flexential has done is really built a robust capability set that the customer can essentially activate or enable mm -hmm. when they're ready to use it. And so they're clearly consuming space and power out of the gates, but connectivity, if they're a growing business, connectivity grows in uh, scale and reach. Yes. But also some of the virtualized compute services I mentioned um, like uh, data protection, really protecting the data that's federating within our environments or across our platform is critically important. And uh, and really private cloud, which is um, provides the same elasticity as public cloud, but is uh, some of the workloads that our customers um, host with us uh, ultimately can't go in, out into the public domain. And right. so providing that same elasticity in our environments is valuable to our customers. But really the Flexential Fabric is about uh, enabling the customer to make one connection mm -hmm. and that orchestrates whatever solutions or whatever capabilities they're looking for, yeah. you know, kind of behind the scenes. And yeah. what I said before, they're kind of one and done and, and we can um, basically virtualize all those capabilities over that single port. That's fantastic. So um, Chris, you are, I believe, yes, uh, it says you are on the panel that actually wraps up this entire event. And it's a significant panel titled Data Center Operations in the Age of AI. Um, every single guest who has been on JSA TV today has had some play in AI. Why don't you tell our viewers a little bit about the panel that you're uh, you're speaking on and your, your place in kind of the AI conversation? Yeah. So first of all, we're solutioning for some of the largest AI, mm -hmm. I'll call them GPU environment 
creators because sure. as you can appreciate, you know, really um, GPU infrastructure availability really started in the beginning of 2023 in scale. Yeah. So there have been providers like uh, CoreWeave and Applied Digital who have been, um, you know, basically making sure that they have the raw material to mm -hmm. to enable those environments and their raw materials to data center. So that, that's not necessarily directly related to the to the panel topic, but I think we're sort of we're solutioning and creating the environments for them. But as a company, you know, we need to leverage AI as well. Yeah. And as everybody knows, AI is really changing the game. Yeah. So as we think about, you know, the activities that go on our environments that are either on a routine basis or on a um, on a uh, bespoke basis, you know, the availability of AI and the, you know, kind of the 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 uh, the, uh, the 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 sorry, the um, the things that it can tell us sure. from data sets that we've had for a long time that we yeah. haven't been able to process the way that AI can can help us with uh, preventative maintenance. Uh, how do we orchestrate labor in our environments? How do we deal with our own supply chain requirements relative to you know what are thousands of component parts across yeah. our platform? And we, you know we have forty one data centers and uh, with three thousand customers. And so as you can imagine, there's a lot of activity going on in our. You know, Chris, you're the I've talked about AI, like I said, with every single person who's been in that seat today. You were the first one to say that we're actually using it, too, to make our operations better. That makes a whole hell of a lot of sense to me. Yeah. How, how do you not? No, yeah. it's uh, it's a great new resource. Yeah. Um, it makes environments that have been, I'd say, sort of in the same place from a technology mm -hmm. perspective for some time because generators haven't really changed over yeah. time. Electrical infrastructure, switching infrastructure hasn't changed too much over the course of the last yeah. decade. But there's a fair amount of day-to-day um, -day activity, hour-to-hour -hour activity going on in the environments every second of every day, and yeah. and we've we have repositories for that data, but we didn't have the really the ability to um, to uh, you know analyze it in a way that would allow us to gain efficiency, do things um, uh, better and stronger yeah. and faster. Yeah, yeah, well. yeah. Six million dollar man. <laughs> Better, stronger, faster. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so uh, last question, Chris, and I'll let you uh, get uh, back to business. Um, you are contributing to the greener data, aren't you? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Why don't you tell our viewers a little bit about why you are contributing, why it's important to you? Well, I think it's great that you all took the initiative and catalyzed mm -hmm. this uh, this book. It's got a lot of great content in it, and I was glad to be able to contribute. You know, our, our chapter, our contribution mm -hmm. to the book is really about the, the uh, evolution of, of, of cooling technologies to support high performance compute environments. Yeah. And so as, as, as you know, kind of AI and is changing the game fairly mm -hmm. dy dynamically on, on all fronts. And so um, we're seeing that happen, you know, really real time in our environments and, uh, and it still hasn't yet standards, standardized yeah. on a, you know, on a, and on one given solution. So there's a lot at this show about new cooling technologies. Yeah. And ultimately, you know, we run environments where we can see that live and in action, what's working and what's not. Yeah. And, and, uh, and, you know, hopefully lend some uh, insights to the readers uh, on that front. Well, we're, we're lucky to have you. So thank you very much for that. And thank you for being with us on JSA TV. Always great to be here. Thank you. Excellent, Chris. Thank you. And thank you viewers for watching JSA TV. Stay curious, connected, and we'll see you soon.